This is a package from SV1AFN, uh, who's an amateur radio operator in Athens. He also runs, uh, his website is SV1AFN. He also runs a business called Floating Ground. and a little teeny tiny clamshell type aluminum enclosure. And here are the two end pieces and screws. However, I believe that the end connector, ah, well I was wrong. I got this from uh, eBay, and it's a black aluminum box with two female N connectors. I actually thought the N connectors fit the box. The photograph sort of indicates that. This cost $18.19. And delivery was like less than eight days from Greece with eight dollars shipping. But it looks like I will have to mount these to the end plate and then mount the end plates onto the box. The reason I bought this or these. I have this 30 dB attenuator. And I was hoping to mount it here. And it looks like I may be able to do that if I go in and mill away this little rib. I can't neatly fit this to the bottom of the box because of these interfering ribs. Well, this little project is getting worse by the minute. This does appear to be an end cap for this case. A square case and so the end cap fits in any either direction. These however are not the screws. I can just push them in by fingers. Take them back out. They appear to be the correct screws for this end plate. And of course, which comes without screws and just has a straight hole just for some sort of a machine screw. But these won't even hold the end plate on. Looking at the end plate, it will accept the number three screw. Now these, the number three screw, doesn't 
doesn't fit flush in the end plate. So this is all not right. I did find connectors with a one inch square flange on them to accept the flathead screw. They will accept, I hope they'll accept, the number three screw So no drilling, no tapping, but the only thing we can use out of the original kit, the upper and lower half. Now this case is available as a 25.4 by 25.4 or 25 by 25 by something on AliExpress. I just ordered a 25 by 25 by 40 millimeter case for less than $5 delivered. You can buy these end connectors with either flange and you can also buy SO239s with either flange. So I would have to say that buying this kit from Grease is not worth it. I believe this is what was intended to be supplied from Grease. It's just not what ended up coming. Now you see I've started the... Uh, this one's snug. This one's just starting. You see it's going to end up pulling the case together which it should do. That would make it nice and tight. So here's the cellar and what was supposed to come in the kit was two halves of a clamshell aluminum case, eight fasteners, and these N style connectors. Now this one's installed backwards in the box. Of course it needs to be installed the other way around for $18. I'm going to throw all of these in my scrap bucket. These N style connectors are too small flange wise. These screws don't fit the threaded case and these end caps are not no longer necessary. This actually is what I thought I was ordering. Now the split here is um, here. And you see there's a little edge here and here and not quite felt here and here. So since I want to bolt this down to a heat sink I need the mating surface with the heat sink to be flat. So I'm going to take a file or an end mill or a belt sander to one of these two sides, not the joining sides, but one, one or the other, and just make sure it's perfectly flat. And I'll do that with the end connectors on and then they'll be permanently part of this assembly that is rotation orientation this way as well as left and right. So whatever side I pick to fasten down will end up being all one surface. Here's the enclosure with four holes drilled and it will be mated up to this aluminum heat sink. These holes will, well, these holes will be tapped. 
these will be through holes these two will accept the attenuator and these two are just for extra flatness make sure it doesn't warp you can see I've milled this all flat got rid of that ridge so it should sit like this here's the heat sink I intend to use it's uh, 150 by 60 by 25. This is a common heat sink on eBay and AliExpress. I would have preferred a little thicker, a little heavier. Here I've drilled and tapped the four holes that mate with the uh, small enclosure. I flattened out this area here so that the uh, Thirty dB attenuator will fit there. I'm going to put a nice coating of thermal grease, non-hardening, on this uh, nice shiny flat area. I'll turn it over and position it in place and I'll st start all the screws. So these two screws started but not really tight. I'm going to apply some thermal grease to the mounting location for the uh, pad, put the pad in place, and I should have a screw starter but it's in a different place. I'm using 440 um, Imperial Thread screws with conventional cross slots heads and they just clear the attenuator. I'm not sure if number 3's, uh, M3's would be better, but probably m two and a halfs would work fine. And if I were going to use m two and a halfs, I would use Hexed. Uh, cap screws. And there we have our completed 30 decibel attenuator. Now, that little chip inside is rated supposedly for 150 watts. That is dependent upon how the well, the heat is carried away from the resistor. The only other option I can think of would be to have mounted this crosswise so that the uh, connectors are available here instead of having to have your fingers hit the heat sink. But this seemed a little more compact to me. Here's a view of the uh, attenuator wired up. Use pretty thin wire here and be very very careful of these tabs that come out of the uh, attenuator. Just push the wire down until it touches and solder it. Don't bend it very much. Put a little curve in each wire to allow for some thermal expansion. This connector here is going to my spectrum analyzer. This wire is coming from my tracking generator and I've got them just connected together. I'm going to turn the tracking generator on
you see the tracking generator here it's minus 11 pretty well minus 11 this little peak here goes up to minus 10 there it is minus 11 the whole way across so I'm going to interpose this attenuator between the tracking generator and the spectrum analyzer. The attenuator doesn't look so good. Now this is full red scale from uh, about 10 kilohertz to 1.8 gigahertz. And you can see the high end begins to fall off. There's a peak here at minus 40 dB. Here, 41, down from 11. So that's about perfect. But then it loses 10 dB from here. The low spot here appears to be 48 when it should be 41. Now I'll change the span. Now we have a span of uh, 500 megahertz top end and the low end is around 5 megahertz. And the attenuator looks pretty good if you only go to 500 megahertz. It looks like uh, That whole thing is minus 40, give or take six tenths of a decibel. Now I'll get rid of the uh, attenuator. Now we're back to no attenuation at all. Same span, 10 to 500 megahertz. Right here is uh, almost 11 dB down. A little more than 10, back to 11 and a half. So it looks like the attenuator has an attenuation of 39 or 40 decibels, up to 500 megahertz. Now, the, the wattage is something entirely different. The little attenuator chip is good for, I think, 100 or 150 watts. We don't know what this heat sink's going to do. And it might be wise to put a couple of fans on the heat sink. Because this heat sink here will never dissipate 150 watts. It's going to need some help.